All of the organisms on a coral reef are competing for limited nutrients. I want to find out how sponges influence nutrient availability on a coral reef. I'm Kara Fiore, a researcher at Woods Hole Oceanographic, working in the Kujawinski lab. So this sponge, uh, I actually just added a little bit of fluorescein dye, and you can see it is actively pumping that dye out of the sponge. So they can actually filter up to 50,000 times their own volume. So a big sponge, so something like these giant barrel sponges, can filter easily hundreds of liters per hour. And so if you think about as you're swimming out on a coral reef, at some time, fairly recently, all of that water has passed through a sponge. Some sponges are packed full of microbes, whereas other sponges have fewer microbes. These microbes are also going to be influencing what's in the water. And so that water that leaves the sponge is going to be different from the water that entered the sponge. So there may be more nutrients, there may be fewer nutrients, there's probably going to be at least some difference. When you have a lot of sponges on a reef, and many of these have a high density of different microbes, that's going to have a pretty big impact on the water chemistry of the reef, which no one has really looked at yet. So I'm going to go to Florida, and we are going to get in the water near some coral reefs near the Florida Keys, and we'll go up to the sponge, and we can actually check to see if it's pumping water just by adding a little bit of this fluorescent dye. So once we know that that's pumping and that all the dye has cleared, I'll actually take a syringe and sample water from next to the sponge, and then also very slowly sample water coming out of the sponge. The three main questions I'll be asking are, first, how do sponges change the nutrients in the water? Second, how do microbes in a sponge affect the change in nutrients? For this, I'll be comparing sponges with a high density of microbes and sponges with a low density of microbes. Third, how do nutrients differ between water on coral reefs and off of coral reefs? This will tell us if there's a sponge signature in the composition of nutrients on a reef. So basically we're going to have a lot of syringes and bottles of different water samples and then we'll bring them back to the lab and we're going to be able to extract all of the organic matter from that water. Woods Hole is a great place for doing this. We have two main instruments in our lab. They're called mass spectrometers and these exactly measure the mass of different compounds and then we can tell different compounds apart based on their mass. We're going to get a list of thousands of different masses and then the really fun part and exciting part is to go through and try and find out, okay, what's really important in these samples and can we try to identify some of these new compounds. What I get really excited about is being able to find out about the physiology of these sponges, physiology of these microorganisms that form this important relationship. And we can actually start to see what's important to the sponge, what's important to the microbes, and how do they thrive. If sponges increase in abundance, what's going to happen? If sponges decrease in abundance, what's going to happen? And we can actually predict from data like this how that's going to influence nutrient cycling on a coral reef. It's also really exciting to know that what you're doing here in the lab can help us better conserve and improve some of these coral reefs that other people can enjoy.